old, expensive, and complex are relics of the past. Meanwhile, new, affordable, and efficient are hallmarks of progress. This contrast is epitomized by the Starship and Space Shuttle. The latest advancements in Starship's heat shield and welding techniques have not only surpassed, but arguably embarrassed NASA's shuttle in terms of innovation and effectiveness. We'll get into all this and more in today's installment of Alpha Tech. And before getting into the main content, we've got to tell you, thank you so much for supporting our channel these last three years. Right now, we're trying to hit 100K. To get this though, we need your help. So please smash that subscribe button right now, and that way you will never miss out on any of our daily exciting videos for you to watch. All right, let's continue. Although it's undeniable that the space shuttle was an iconic symbol of the U.S. for over three decades, by the time Starship came out, the space shuttle had become just a name. It's not an exaggeration to say this, because with SpaceX's rapid development to a level that's just impossible to ignore, it's not going to be long before they attain perfection. However, even as they gradually improve their technology, SpaceX has managed to embarrass NASA with their advancements in heat shield and welding technology. First, let's talk about heat shield technology. When the Space Shuttle or Starship was being developed, special insulating materials had to be created to protect the spacecraft and astronauts from the extreme cold temperatures of space and the intense friction forces during re-entry, and that can cause temperatures at certain points to rise to about 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The solution from both NASA and SpaceX was a combination of materials known as the Thermal Protection System, or TPS for short. However, for a TPS to work effectively, it needs to be integrated with several different factors. One of the key being to make SpaceX's Starship heat shield superior to NASA's space shuttle, and that is, first and foremost, through the shape of the spacecraft. Starship's significant dimensions result in a larger radius of curvature during re-entry, which in turn pushes the intense heat generated by the shockwave further away from the vehicle's surface. This reduces the thermal load on the spacecraft, making it easier to manage the extreme temperatures encountered as it comes back to Earth. A bigger spacecraft can distribute heat more effectively, lowering the risk of localized hotspots that could lead to structural damage. Another advantage of Starship is just simpler geometry. All versions of Starship have a uniform cylindrical shape, and that allows for easier application of the heat shield tiles. On the other hand, the shape of the shuttle had to be set up so it could glide like an airplane as well as act like a lifting body while falling through the upper atmosphere. Therefore, it had a complex curvature in all three dimensions. There were a large number of things, control services, wheel wells, radio antennas, inspection hatches, sensors, and so forth that had to penetrate through the heat shield, and this added some complications. Worse still, to keep that weight low, they used thinner tiles where the heating was less, and in places of extreme pressure, like the leading edge of the wings, they used heavy, molded, reinforced carbon-carbon sections instead of tiles. There were four different kinds of tiles with acronyms HRSI, FRCI, TUFI, and LRSI, and three more kinds of insulation that were not tile-based for upper surfaces, FIB, FRSI, RCC, FRSI. And then finally, there were gap filler strips that were wedged into gaps for wheel wells and such, which would fall out when the wheels were lowered. The end result was that no two of the 31,000 tiles on the shuttle were of the same shape, type, or thickness. Every single tile had to be manufactured specifically for its location. As you can see in the photo, they were all individually numbered, and a vast number of people were employed to install, inspect, and replace broken or missing tiles. Some kind of tiles were extremely fragile, and if you dropped one or even just put a little too much pressure on it to put it into place, you could damage it, and a new, unique copy of the tile would then have to be manufactured. As a consequence, even the best tile installers could only manage to install about two tiles a week. Wow, talk about slow. If a critical tile were lost while in orbit, there's no possibility of carrying a replacement tile and fixing it up there in space because they were all different. Of course, it can't be denied that SpaceX's modern engineering methods are among the most advanced. Most of the surface of Starship is covered with identical hexagonal tiles, which simplifies the manufacturing process, especially since they're attached automatically making any repairs way quicker and cheaper. Of course, there are certain areas where smaller or more curved hexagonal tiles are needed, but their number is insignificant compared to the total of 18,000 heat shield tiles. The tiles are deliberately installed with small gaps between them, and they are designed to expand to fill those gaps as they're heated upon re-entry. 
Gaps between the tiles are also well tolerated because of the small amount of remaining propellant in the fuel tank cools the steel beneath and uses a hexagonal pattern rather than the more rectangular arrangement on the shuttle, and that prevents jets of superheated air following a straight line path between a row of tiles. Replacing a damaged or missing tile can be done in a matter of minutes by a guy on an elevating work platform. They also clamp the tiles onto small steel pins welded to the rocket's frame to increase their sturdiness, rather than relying solely on adhesive like NASA's space shuttle. As for the placement of the heat shield tiles, the shuttle tiles were much more vulnerable than those on Starship because they were put side by side with a huge tank operating at cryogenic temperatures, which was covered in foam that was prone to detaching. This meant that the shuttle tiles were often hit with big chunks of ice and frozen foams that could break large numbers of them. Starships put atop the booster, and the tanks don't reach such low temperatures, so no foam is used and ice formation is less likely, and if it does, it's not going to hit the tiles. Besides, Starship's use of stainless steels for its construction also gives thermal benefits. Stainless steel has a much higher melting point and better heat resistance compared to the aluminum used in the space shuttle structure. This allows Starship to endure higher temperatures without the need for an overly complicated thermal protection system. The material also gives structural strength, enabling the spacecraft to withstand the stresses of launch and re-entry with less risk of deformation or damage. Meanwhile, the shuttle's thermal protection system requires meticulous inspection and frequent tile replacements after each flight due to the vulnerability of its aluminum structure. Aluminum can lose half its strength at temperatures around 200 degrees Celsius and can rapidly and catastrophically melt when exposed to excessively high temps. Starship, on the other hand, well, that's made of stainless steel, and that can withstand temperatures of around 700 degrees Celsius before losing half its strength. This makes the issue of thermal protection a lot easier to manage. Starship's heat shield's pretty impressive, and that's not all. Recent improvements by SpaceX and Elon have made it even better. After Starship's fourth launch, Elon decided to replace the entire old heat shield with a new one that's twice as durable. While the exact composition of these new tiles is unknown, it's likely that they are made from a type of ceramic matrix composite, CMC, similar to the old TUFROC tiles, but with new materials added to enhance durability. These new tiles are often prone to cracking or detachment. Additionally, Elon's introduced a new ablative material placed right under the new heat shield tiles, though only in key areas that are likely to get exposed to those extremely high temps. This helps Starship maintain its weight while still providing effective thermal protection. It's not just Starship's heat shield that might embarrass NASA. The Starship's welding also sticks out. Recently, an OIG report highlighted welding joints that failed to meet NASA's specifications. According to NASA officials, the welding issues arose from Boeing's inexperienced technicians and inadequate planning and oversight of work orders. The lack of trained and skilled workforce increased the risk that Boeing will continue to produce parts and components that don't comply with NASA's requirements and industry standards. We can't put all the blame on Boeing, but NASA engineers overseeing this rocket mission must also bear some responsibility. In fact, welding issues related to the core stage of the SLS were made public as early as October of last year, and it's unclear why these issues have not yet been fully fixed. So when comparing SpaceX's Starship's welding to others, no one can match its quality, not even SLS. Currently, you can see Starship spacecraft that are sleek, smooth, and shiny. Of course, the welds are visible, but compared to earlier versions, this represents tremendous progress. To achieve this, SpaceX has gone through many different welding techniques. Initially, SpaceX used flux core welding for the construction of early Starship prototypes. This method, while effective for a basic structural assembly, had limitations in precision and resulted in welds that were prone to cracks and corrosion. These issues were compounded by the fact that the welding was often performed by welders without specialized rocket experience, leading to inconsistent quality. To address these issues, SpaceX transitioned to TIP-TIG, tungsten inert gas welding, a more advanced technique that allowed for cleaner, deeper welds with less warping. TIP-TIG welding provides greater control over the welding process, reducing the risk of defects and enhancing the overall structural integrity of the spacecraft. Further innovation came with the adoption of laser welding, which SpaceX uses for many sections of the Starship. Laser welding offers precise control over the heat input, allowing for deep penetration into the metal with minimal distortion. This technique enables entire segments of the Starship to be welded in just a single pass, significantly speeding up the construction process while maintaining high standards of quality and consistency. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.